Hey y'all, thank you for joining me for the um, Divine Masculine Energy Reading. Yeah, I'm not frustrated, surprisingly, but I recorded seven minutes, exactly, like 702 minutes, seven minutes, two seconds of the Divine Masculine Reading and the motherfucker cut off, like it just stopped recording, was saying something about trying to find Wi-Fi. Um, I have been having issues with my Wi-Fi, so I either have to use the hotspot on my phone um, or go to Starbucks in order to upload videos if I don't record them on my phone. And so, here I am, starting over, <laughs> starting from scratch, and I'm not frustrated because cause I'm not the most patient, especially when it comes to like technology and shit. But um, what came to me was that's part of the energy that's coming through for you all as divine masculine energies, or those of you on the journey to evolving into divine masculine energy is that um, you're looking at certain aspects of your life as an opportunity to do something over. So whether it's pertaining to your career a relationship it's like you want to start from scratch you, you feel like you want to do over you know what i'm saying let's let's do this over and that's beautiful it's beautiful that you all are tapping into that energy of not feeling stuck in your circumstances or stuck in your mind state but understand that like every day that you get up you have another chance to do shit over every moment that you breathe you have an opportunity for a do-over and so um that speaks to oh my god that speaks to how much you guys are evolving and tapping into christ consciousness yo when i tell you i'm out here thugging for real i i didn't put on no um like i usually put on this oil i created to help me not get ate the fuck up when i'm outside by the uh, mosquitoes and i didn't and so yeah i don't know if i'm gonna make it through this reading without <clears throat> lord is it in this bag put my oil on i was so excited to get to the reading i was like i don't even feel like finding the oil i'll be fine but shh, i don't know because my back is itching i'm getting ate up over here um I'm going to try to push through, but y'all, when I tell y'all I can't stand mosquitoes, I can't stand them motherfuckers, and they love me, so I don't know how long this is going to last, but we're going to go ahead and get into it so that I can at least push through this one and then go find the oil, and then maybe I'll have time to do the um, feminine reading, and I'm also thinking about doing a karmic energy reading because some messages about uh you all having karmic energies in your uh presence or as part of your journey has been coming through to me as well and so i think it's important sometimes to tap into those energies so that you are aware of uh, the spiritual um aspect of what's going on with those karmic energies because they do serve a purpose and there are particular ways for you to go about dealing with them learning from them um so yeah while i'm scratching like a crackhead um <laughs> i'm gonna try to push through and get that message to you and then be on the lookout for the divine feminine and the and possibly a karmic um energy reading as well so um I have channeled quite a few songs about the energy of the divine masculine energy. I mean, the divine masculine. And also, um, been seeing some signs and synchronicity. So, like, earlier today, I'm at the gas station, um, about to leave. And I'm listening to my music streaming service. I use YouTube, YouTube Music. And it just randomly went off. And the radio started playing, and it was Angel by uh, Anita Baker, the classic. Um, it was, um, you're my angel, my angel. If I could, I'd give you the world. 
I'm sure y'all know the song. I put it in the um. See, it's that bullshit. I put it in the um. <laughs> I put it on the community board, but um, that came through right. So then I pull off from the gas station from the pump. And the first light that I got to, I bullshit you not, somebody's license plate said Angels. And I started to interpret the meaning and get the download, the channeling, which was that you all have an angelic frequency around you that's helping you uh, through your journey, like a, almost like a hero or a heroine. Um, shout out to my sis, the herbal heroine of Memphis, um, helping you out of a dark space, helping you out of a dark time or period in your life, possibly the dark night of the soul where you are ascending and awakening to a lot of the lies that have been imposed on you, the conditioning, the fears, the shadows. And so that is beautiful. That is priceless. Um, and that is to be celebrated um, and not taken for granted. So that was coming through to me about you all having an angel of some sort or an angelic frequency around you, be it someone in the physical or uh, an ancestor or spirit guide in the um, 5D. So there's that. And then also there were some songs that have been coming through to me for shit, about a week or so now. Um, that I just been jotting down in my phone and they are yeah this is gonna be a short one they turn me up y'all who y'all got around y'all draining y'all that's why I've been led to do the karmic energy reading because there's someone or some people some energies that are draining you like vampires and their energy is just low vibe and unlike that angelic frequency they don't lift you up or help you raise your vibration they are uh feeding off of you like these mosquitoes are feeding <laughs> off of me and the damn airplane just went by because that is symbolic of seeing the karmic connection from a higher perspective the lesson that it comes to teach you um is that yeah as you raise your vibration, there are people who will be around you trying to pull you down or pull you back, kind of like that crabs in a barrel um, type of uh, that analogy. Um, but also, especially for divine masculines who are tapping into their divine feminine energy, connecting with divine feminine energy uh, inside and outside of them, it comes to show you when you connect with a karmic that there's a part of you that aligns with that karmic energy and then there's a part of you that aligns with divine femininity and the journey or where you are on the journey or where you've recently been on the journey comes to show you the difference show you how the different energies affect you between the karmic uh, energy and the divine feminine energy and um to teach you a lesson to know your worth to not settle for that which drains you just because of whatever superficial benefit it brings to the table and teach you to have more depth um and so yeah that's something that i've channeled uh, for the divine masculine as well and i'm gonna be pulling from the saints and mystics um reading cards but first i was going to share with y'all the songs and maybe even some of the lyrics so we got angel by anita baker kind of like the divine masculine feelings toward the divine feminine or some divine feminine entity it does not have to be somebody in the physical who you look at like they're an angel or angelic presence in your life uh it could actually be big mama and them watching over you or you know what i'm saying a sister or someone deceased or um somebody that you're connecting with in not necessarily a uh, romantic way but um 
you guys are in a very three of wands type of energy the three of wands in the uh tarot is a man standing at the shore with three wands and he's looking out as though he's like waiting on uh his ships to come in because he realizes that he can do better that he deserves better that he can have better there's something better out there for him and so he stands there waiting on it contemplating about it envisioning it um some say that that car represents travel as well since he's standing at the shore of a body of water so it can represent traveling um over water but it's an expansive energy and the song that came to mind when actually i was listening to the song and then i thought about it connecting with the energy of the three of wands and not the other way around is um k john's uh ocean and oh maybe that's what it was okay so there was a song I was attributing to just saw 144 on my phone that that uh, frequency of Christ consciousness. Hold on, y'all. I can't take no more. I'm gonna have to pause this because, baby, I am itching. Back. Okay. I'm back, <laughs> y'all. And just like that, I'm in the house. I couldn't find my oil. I don't know what the fuck possessed me to think that I could sit out there and not get ate up. And wasn't getting ate up the way I like to. You hear me? The fuck? Um, <laughs> that was terrible. I couldn't find my oil, which means I'm still itching like a crackhead. But at least I'm in the house, in my comfort zone, away from the vultures, the vampires, and um, able to push forward with a little relief. I ain't got to worry about continuing to get bit. And that's a motherfucking message because masculines, if you are connecting with a karmic energy, this individual or individuals that are draining you, you're not, you're needing, or you are, because I've been feeling like really proud of y'all. So I feel like the work is being done. Um, but some of y'all, y'all like on the verge, you're on the verge of that breakthrough or getting tired like I just did on some king uh knight of swords shit and like abruptly making the change that needs to be made like you tired you fed the fuck up you your mind made up i, I think i did a reading um recently that was like ain't nothing like a made up mind yeah my mind was made up out there like if i can't find some relief from what's going on with these mosquitoes i'm gonna have to go into my safe place into my shelter and so um that's the energy that's coming forth for you guys in terms of those situations and circumstances that are draining your energy. Uh, prioritizing yourself, realizing that you do have other options and that you do always have a choice and a say in the matter. And retreat into your safe place. Be that uh, a place, a person, a thing, a mind state, meditation, whatever it is, you always have um, that option. Y'all are no longer settling for the drama and the draining low vibrational bs and you're putting an end to the bullshit so that's something to be proud of if you have not done that uh don't be surprised if something occurs that leads you um to that that just ticks you off to the point where you like uh-uh I got to get back to my happy place. I got to get back to my safe space, uh, to my foundation, um, because this is throwing me off center. Uh, oh, my God, y'all. Anywho, we're going to pull <laughs> from, oh, no, I wanted to share with y'all the, the songs. So, it was, I think when I um, paused the video, I was talking about the song, um, Ocean, I think it's Ocean by um, K. John, and he's talking about just like knowing that there's better out there for him and acknowledging that he could see it uh, coming in. So, having had hope and faith and uh, even patience in an expansive mind state. Hold on, I'm gonna find the lyrics to it. 
it's not a new song so a lot of y'all might be familiar with it it says the moment i've been waiting on and my soul is overflowing with anxieties and expectations full of desires oh no i just want it so bad you know and it just seems so real it's right there i just want to reach out and touch it for it all disappears sometimes it feels like everything is passing me by every now and then it feels like my ship has gone and sailed away so that's for the divine masculines who have once hoped and dreamed of a particular lifestyle a particular connection career just some sense of fulfillment and now um having it within reach but being afraid that it's all a dream like um like biggie said is it all a dream um or oh my god i'm lumped up don't went out like willy lump lump like they said on uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, minister society lord what was i thinking i tried y'all i tried uh all for y'all i done got chewed up um yeah the masculine just being um at that point of being hopeful but also that triggering some anxiety about whether or not they can live up to uh main obtaining and maintaining that which seems possible uh for them is this a dream is it all gonna come crashing down is the other shoe gonna drop you know what i'm saying and so there's work to be done about uh being more optimistic reprogramming the subconscious mind to know that you're not only uh worthy and deserving but you are receiving um the fulfillment that you've always hoped and dreamed of and the work is for you is to just tap into your feminine energy and receive it and then balance that out by tapping into your masculine energy of going after it um because ultimately that is the goal balance of the masculine and feminine energies as well as of your light and your dark so now that it's like you're more familiar with what lies in your shadows um what monsters lie underneath the bed for you what keeps you up at night what things from your past still linger you you you've reached the first step the awareness now it's time to gather those tools build your support system your support team like that angelic frequency uh that's showing up in your energy and um do the work to um integrate your light and your dark because okay you you're aware you acknowledge that darkness that's within you but you're gonna have to acknowledge your light too you're not a bad person you know what i'm saying like you gotta have some good qualities what are those big yourself up pat yourself on the back and that's a part of uh, the death of the ego you know what i'm saying like being confident and having humility uh, at the same time knowing how to just saw 7-eleven knowing how to uh honor yourself without feeling like you gotta down or demean someone else or demean yourself and play small in order to make other people feel better if that's the case those are not people you need to be around and fuck them okay big middle finger <laughs> to them those are not your people um but the song says now the tide is coming near i see the waves flowing out there on the ocean i know my ship is coming in just past the horizon and right where the sky ends because out there on the ocean i know my ship is coming in so don't leave me hanging i've been waiting too long but this moment my ship has finally come like for anybody who really resonates with that energy that shit is like can bring you to tears of joy as my grandmama used to say like i used to see her as a little girl i used to see her cry and i'd be like grandma what's wrong and she'd be like oh baby i'm just crying tears of joy and i'm like she lying something bothering her who i need to beat up but as an adult i truly understand how you can reach a point of joy and happiness and fulfillment that it brings you to tears and not all tears are 
from a place of hurt and uh, sadness. As a matter of fact, there is a connection there because if you had not went through those hard times, the hurt, the pain, the sadness, then you probably would not appreciate the good times, the joy, the fulfillment um, to the point of being in tears. So it's all connected. It's all a part of the uh, flower of life. That's what this print is because everything is connected. It's all a connected pattern. And at the end of the day, we are one. Just saw um, 9 11. So know that you are protected as you do whatever it is that you're intuitively led to do. As you take that leap of faith, acknowledging that your ships have finally come in, or as you are waiting for some of you, because we're all at different points on the journey, waiting on your ships to come in and sitting there contemplating or in fear or having anxiety about what getting so close to that thing that you wish you always wish you had. Uh, uh, like getting close to that and then being scared or fumbling the ball or getting hurt or you know what I'm saying like don't allow that to stop you you need to be in the energy of this gentleman here acknowledging what's before you and um being authentic about how you feel if you're scared say you're scared <laughs> and then do the shit anyway like you don't want like he's saying your ships to pass you by so I'm gonna put that on the community board as well there were a few other songs I'm so glad I can get the damn message out without scratching and digging. My God, that was uncomfortable. Um, PJ Morton, ready. Now, I think they play this song on the radio, but I don't listen to the radio a lot. It just so happened to come on um, randomly on my music streaming uh, platform and... I know it's good if you're ready. We can do something, something. We can just go steady. Hold on. Ready, PJ Morton, before I fuck this man's phone go any further. Of course, I'm not going to play it because I don't want YouTube giving me a copyright strike, even though I don't get paid for this. <laughs> no way. Um. But I think if you get a bunch of those, they can shut your whole channel down. And then I'm going to end up on the street corner with a bullhorn. And that ain't really my style. Where the lyrics? No. Oh, well, these still the same lyrics. So the lyrics go, girl, take my hand. Let me take you on a journey. Let me be your man. I want to show you some things you've never seen before. I know that you're a boss, but I promise, girl, there's so much more. All you got to do is come with me. I don't want to play around anymore. I know there's no one else for me, and that's for sure. Baby, won't you try me? Please just don't deny me. I'm putting the ball in your court. We can do whatever you want. No, he's, I, I'm, I'm adding shit now. We can do what you want. Girl, if you're ready, we ain't got to waste no time. We can just go steady. We can do whatever you want. Girl, if you're ready, we ain't got to waste no time. Okay, he's saying the same thing. Open up. Okay, I admit it. Took me a minute to get it, but now I got it, and I don't want to be without it. So please let go. I promise I won't ever let you hurt no more. All you got to do is come with me, girl. So that's like that fear that he was talking about in the ocean song of being like within this angelic presence, this person, your significant other, your counterpart, the person you recognize as your soulmate, your twin flame, wifey, whatever. And being like, what the shit? Reluctant, hesitant, afraid. Um, but that's part of the journey. And if she is a true divine feminine energy she not sweating you about that because she understands as a high priestess the work that has to be done behind the scenes to develop into um a divine masculine energy that stands in his king uh essence that's something that's been coming up a lot that king energy moving from say the page or the knight into the king and then the emperor um status as a masculine 
uh, energy. So she gets it because she had to go from the page to the knight to the queen to the empress. And she knows that journey all too well. So she's able to show the compassion and the patience and the love, the unconditional love um, that Christ consciousness and still hold herself in high regard and know her worth and not put you down because of what your journey is looking like and how it's unfolded. It takes a karmic to put that pressure on. And uh, a lot of times like car female karmic energies, when they connect with a masculine energy or someone who's on the journey, to embody in their uh, divine masculine energy because there is a difference between masculine energy and divine masculine energy when you're maneuvering as that energy on that journey of elevating and maturing a karmic energy is going to poke and prod and um interrogate and insult <laughs> and chase and all the low vibrational things that make the journey even more difficult for you because you trigger her. You trigger her um, abandonment wounds. You trigger her insecurities. You trigger her um, whatever her agenda um, may be. You're going against that. And you're going to get a lot of resistance. But there's a part of you that has been attracted to that type of energy and therefore have manifested that into your 3D reality. Just like there's a part of you that is attracted to the divine feminine energy and therefore have attracted that into your sphere as well. And so you had a crossroads and you left to make um, a choice. We are at a point, especially with all this seven energy um, pushing us into our divinity, into a closer relationship with the most high and embodying our own divine nature um there's a lot of circumstances that are pushing divine masculine energies into their true god-like um nature and forcing you to make a decision and should you decide to go the opposite direction and choose that low vibe energy or entity that you are um probably more accustomed to then you repeat cycles of low vibrational energy and therefore that manifests in your reality is hurt pain rejection disappointment headaches drama stress even more trauma <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's how you get those connections where you got like the unhappy miserable baby daddy and like shit just get worse you know what I'm saying? It has a snowball effect. But when you tap into that divine masculine energy and you choose the divine feminine energy to partner um, with, to move forward on the journey with, whether that's an internal thing or external. For some of you, you don't have the manifestation of uh, a divine feminine counterpart in your 3D reality uh, yet. But if you're doing that work, to become a divine masculine she coming um we're not meant to do these things alone and something else that i've been channeling y'all ain't pulled a damn card and i've got what 20 30 minutes of damn content already i told you i've been channeling my ass off but for a lot of us it's coming to me that we have reached a certain like pinnacle of um our existence where we've reached a certain level of success and achievement on our own and then as a result of say our ancestral wounding our karmic wounding something that we experienced in a prior lifetime or whatever it's like we've hit that wall because we're not meant to go the rest of the journey by ourselves many of us have been chosen to be the one that breaks those generational curses of lack consciousness and poverty consciousness um and we are to be the first millionaires in our family, but we're not meant to do it alone. We're meant to move forward in partnership. And that's why we only reached a certain level of success alone. And we felt like we couldn't get any further. Uh, because you're further, like that three of wands energy, like that ocean 
energy in that song is coming with what's on that ship that's coming in for you. You're meant to do it with your counterpart and um, as part of your divine mission, as part of the reward for having done the work and taken up your cross um, up to this point. And you're not going to get that with a karmic energy. And even if you get it, you're not going to keep it. It's going to be like pouring into a cup with a hole in it because you'll get the millions <laughs> and then the next thing you know you got you got a million dollars but you got two million dollars worth of bills because there's still toxicity in that connection and the foundation its core is not of uh of god it's not because of your divine mission and your commitment you, the both of you's commitment um to the most high so that's something to keep in mind as well um what was the other song? It was something else. Y'all gonna have a whole playlist fucking with me. Bob Marley. Satisfy my soul. So every month, uh, with the past four months, I have done, um, been a vendor at this e local event called Reggae at the Shed. And one of the performers, my guy Yubu, he performs, um, he performed this one time, uh, Satisfy My Soul by Bob Marley. And his rendition of it, oh my God, I told him, you gonna sing that at my wedding. Like, I love me some Robert Nesta Marley. Do you hear me? That was my husband in a past life. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That's a beautiful man. And I have heard that song a zillion times. But this last time when I heard it, it just, oh, it just spoke to my soul. And then I heard it the other day and I was like, that is the energy that the divine masculine feels and probably the divine feminine too, um, about the connection with this angelic frequency because he's elevating and raising his vibration and no longer uh is satisfied by the sexual exploits and the superficial nature of the karmic energies that he has connected with up to this point because the divine feminine brings something so much more valuable and um i ain't gonna say worthy but something that has the potential to help build a legacy or uh be long term some something she brings something to the table that they can see themselves like going the distance with this person on their side as a partner um and it satisfies their soul not just their body or their loins you know what i'm saying so like she might be sexy but she also has depth um and so that was what was coming to me from that song. So I'm going to put that on the community board too. And you guys can check out that song as well as its lyrics. If any of this is resonating um, to you. I think that might have been the last one. It's definitely not the last song. But it's the last one I put in my notes to make sure that I uh, mentioned when I got ready to do the reading. I'm gonna pull from the um, Saints and Mystics reading card, just our 2222, because these connections are ground and they coming in. And a lot of you as divine masculine energies are ready. Y'all getting over that fear, you stepping out on faith, you're acknowledging how you feel, you tapping into your throat chakra, your solar plexus um, chakra with the confidence to move forward in these connections and understanding that some of the healing that you need to do is actually going to occur in the connection. So y'all are no longer waiting to be completely healed, rich, and able to provide millions. No, you are meant to amass that type of fortune with your partner. And for some of you, you and your partner may be in the same space financially or not. Like there maybe there's not a, a huge gap in where you are um, financially. And that's because y'all are meant to build that strong foundation together. Not you having it all and then them coming into what you 
provide y'all are meant to work together to build your legacy to build the kingdom and the queendom to build um uh, i was watching did i share that with y'all christopher wateki he does like a, a astrology and energy report and he actually stopped doing it for like a whole year but the first one that he has done since he came back i was watching it and he was talking about building your camelot tapping into your king energy to build your uh your Camelot to create home, your safe space, and a strong foundation as we move forward as light workers. Um, again, not meant to do this shit alone, but to be in partnership. Um, that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And it's such a testament of God's love to send something or someone that fulfills you in a way that makes you feel safe and secure but still not putting that before the divine but seeing the divine in it you know what i'm saying um i like to use this deck especially when working with masculine energies because there are a lot of masculine archetypes and um energies in this deck so spirit please bring forth the best message of uh, for the divine masculine energies at this time may it bless each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Some of y'all are having some premonitions, not only about these connections, but about your future, about what's to come. You've had dreams, you've had visions, and you don't realize just how close you are to it. Or some of you, you do realize, because like I said, y'all tapping into an elevated level of awareness where you like, oh, shit, this shit ain't hocus pocus. This for real. So face down, face down always speaks to the aspect of the situation that has not revealed itself or that you have not considered that you don't know what's in your blind spot, that sort of thing. And face down, we have the number 17 with St. Teresa, divine ecstasy. Because the journey that you're on, the connection you're being led to, that ship that is coming in, is leading you to divine ecstasy, being completely drunk in love, as Beyonce say. And falling deeper in love with the divine. Like once you see the fullness of, or start to see the fullness of what God is really trying to gift you, you take the rose, she's standing at a rose bush, then we talk about separating the real from the fake. You take the rose along with its thorns and you enjoy it for everything that it brings forth um, for you. So for some of you, you've been depressed. You've been in a low vibrational state. You've been stressed out. The dark night of soul will do that to you. That shame and guilt and all of the things that have been holding you back and holding you down, it'll do that to you. But this cup of love that's being handed to you by the divine is bringing you divine ecstasy. She got a little sexy nun vibe going on. See, she got a booty poked out. <laughs> so it's bringing to mind sacred sex. Like you ain't hunching for the sake of hunching. This is like sex that heals. You know what I'm saying? Seeing the stars and the moons and the, those, uh, what do they call them? Cosmic orgasms. And like even when you and your person are not connecting sexually, you still feel just aroused by their presence and their energy and like the difference between what you used to and what you now have the honor of enjoying. And then that makes you take more pride in what you bring to the table and how you showing up. So divine ecstasy. I may read the message for divine ecstasy for you guys, but we're gonna move forward to the next card, which is Edgar Casey, represented by the number twenty-three. I told y'all that number twenty-three is significant of uh, this being your Jordan year. So how synchronistic for it to show up um, in this reading? Edgar Casey is like. Um, the one of the most known psychic uh or intuitive um individuals in the world um i think i got i got quite a few of his books but i ain't read read now um but messages there are messages coming through to you about this divine ecstasy and that being in the upright that's something that you guys are already aware of that's why i saw premonitions um because you've been receiving messages and downloads and dreams and signs and synchronicities 
um or it may be something that you read in a book he's got a bunch of books here as he's channeling these energies and as you can see he has on his um his good clothes because you know like when you put your clothes on you serious when you put when you when you, when you put your good shit on like this <laughs> you serious there's serious messages coming through to you guys about this divine ecstasy and but you may not have been able to interpret it um as such and then you have the number seven y'all know we in the seven energy with the seven seven portal so you got seven and uh 17 showing up in this reading with saint joseph that's jesus damn because you're meant to tap into this divine ecstasy and follow the messages that have come through to you they're leading you to divine creation and i've said this before this is speaking to a lot of you want to be fathers but maybe you feel like it's too late in the game for you to be a father or you have had um been in partnerships where you've had miscarriages or abortions or adoptions and you've kind of given up on the idea of having a child um but that opportunity is being presented to you in these divine connections which <laughs> that's the card at the bottom of the deck divine connection socrates we'll get to uh buddy in a minute but yeah saint joseph with divine creation because you're tapping more into your father energy your king your king energy your emperor um energy as you are to birth something new into this world but those of you who do not want children it's all good this message still speaks to you because if you're not bringing in as you can see this golden light around this kid there is a card i pulled last night called the golden children i shared on a community board but it talks about being called to bring in like star seed children children who are meant to change the world want to come through uh you and your counterpart so that's divine creation now if that's not it it's a business it's a practice it's a mission it's something that you and your counterpart as a result of your divine ecstasy and the messages that are coming through to you are meant to create and you're tapping more into your inner wisdom with 21 with uh confucius confucius is one of the most wise entities to ever walk uh the face of the earth you're no longer going through shit just to be going through shit. You're actually learning the lessons of uh, what you've been through. And like um, Lisa Nichols often says, uh, we are developing the stories that we are to share with our children and grandchildren. Our uh, on the porch in the rocking chair stories. That's the stuff that we're experiencing now. Um, and we are it's what's fueling our next steps and so that shows a lot of maturity and growth on you all's part again something to celebrate so congratulations i am so proud of y'all because ain't nothing like repeating the same cycles and the same lessons over and over and the fuck over again it will wear you out but it serves you because at some point you're gonna get tired you're gonna get tired of being the same person learning the same lessons going through the same shit feeling the same way and then you transmute that pain or that disappointment into wisdom to help you move forward and possibly never step into that type of situation again and then even if you did you uh handle it differently but i think the ultimate thing that we are to do with wisdom is to share it with other people and that's possibly what this whole divine creation is about because you're meant to create some platform or some way to share your wisdom with the collective. St. Jude, saving grace. That's that angelic energy of the divine feminine. Can you see these moon cycles here? That is, uh, moon cycles are um, symbolic of feminine energy feminine energies create and manifest and are to align and live their lives um in accordance with the moon cycles hence our menstruation being also called a moon cycle because the moon governs our emotions our intuition and our energies and divine feminine energy has been your saving grace masculine has brought you new life has helped usher you into a birth you into a new way of living thinking 
being, operating, and helping you to feel safe, showing you where uh, something or someone is draining you, showing you, whether it be by example or advice or whatever, um, how to hold yourself at higher regard. And the, the only thing that comes to mind when you think of that type of situation is grace. That's amazing grace. That opportunity to make a different choice. That's grace. That's God's grace coming through you through the divine energy. Whatever that looks like for you. And at the bottom of that deck, we got Confucius. Because the bottom line is this divine, these divine connections. So it's divine connections and not divine connection because it's not just speaking to one divine connection. You all are going to align with higher quality friends, co-workers, community, not just your uh in your love partnerships. You're building family. Um this reading that got long as shit, y'all. Christopher, represented by the number three aligning on your soul journey. That's a warrior. He's been through it. Bruised. But still going, still standing, still fighting out in the wilderness. I ain't gonna read no more because we'll be here for forever. Um, I'm gonna read the message of divine ecstasy. And what a book. Since that's at the top, and that was the thing that you're not seeing, it was face down. And then maybe even Socrates, uh, which number 35, it represents. That break down to an eight as we approach this lion's gate energy. It's leading you to a divine to divine connections. And literally, the first card and the last card break down to an eight. Because 17 gives you eight and 35 gives you eight. Eight, eight lion's gate. Bam. Straight like that. As you close out these low vibrational cycles and elevate, I'm so happy for y'all. Like, for real, for real. And I'm not going to cry on this camera not today. Nope. I'm not going to do it. It says, St. Teresa reminds us. Okay, let me start over. Emotionally, because it breaks it down to like emotionally, spiritually, and consciously. Each card has a different description for those three aspects or areas of your life. So emotionally, St. Teresa reminds us of the simplicity and potential of seeing life romantically, placing our hearts front and center, unafraid of suffering, and willing to explore the places of power through love and loss. Spiritually, she activates and opens the heart, throat, and third eye chakras, teaching us ways to connect with the sacred through words, chants, meditation, and prayer. St. Teresa comes through to those in need of grace and spiritual epiphany. Thank God for grace. St. Teresa shows us grandeur among the mundane. Consciously, St. Teresa shows us grandeur among the mundane by influences of strong connections with the universe through our mind. She encourages us to become aware of spiritual signs in our daily life to access divine guidance easily and quickly. St. Teresa signals her energy coming through by presenting you signs in life, particularly the appearance of roses when confirmation is sought. So many of you may be seeing um, roses that was one point sh this message came through to me and i had randomly saw like i don't know if somebody had had like a wedding or what but i was somewhere where you wouldn't expect to see roses and i saw them like scattered um on the ground but even um uh, for you all i know that i know that i know that i know that we've talked about this because i've been talking about the accepting the rose the beauty of the rose you got to accept these thorns as well so you got to accept the imperfections that come along with the beauty and the romance of the experiencing uh, the rose. And then we have divine connections with Socrates. And then we're going to close the reading out. I was going to read from Rumi, but we'll say that for another day because Rumi is extensive. It's poetic. It's romantic. And it's deep. 
and I think we've gotten deep enough but maybe next time we'll get a message from uh, the Rumi Oracle but Socrates is the father of philosophy so like what you've been experiencing is changing your whole philosophy on life this just lets me know you guys are coming out of the dark night of the soul and y'all coming out swinging so emotionally, Socrates reminds us to bring the divine into your life and break down the walls that stifle and numb the creative soul. You have a story to tell inside your bones, ready to bear its honest face. Resolution is brewing and apologies are forthcoming. Be open and take a step at a time. Socrates appears to us at unexpected times. Spiritually, Socrates appears to us at unexpected times connected through dreams and visions to teach us new info he activates the crown and throat chakras during energy work and when we are on our life's mission he tells us that true philosophy has its roots in the streets amongst those living close to the bone of life showing us that continued resilience through life's lessons of struggle pain sorrow and tragedy are catalysts for powerful breakthroughs before i go any further that shit is so true when i tell you where i come from i got plenty of street knowledge street stories have participated in some street shit nothing too drastic because i'm all i've always been the shaky friend <laughs> but i'm no stranger to the type of shit that goes on in the streets but when i tell you that has built character that has built stamina that has built endurance that has built wisdom and um just a anchoring that i couldn't pay for you know what i'm saying it's like they say the school of hard knocks you learn from those street experiences and it actually gives you more depth and more if you were a recipe it gives you more seasoning you know what i'm saying to share uh your experience with others when you are able to connect with things of a more street um nature and so i don't never knock people who have uh, a similar up bringing from me or have been on some street shit what i do knock is these people who be faking it who ain't about that life you know what i'm saying like that's not something you should want to fake but that's a that's a whole nother story i'm finished reading this but i wanted to make that point because it's so important is there are people who look down on people who come from where i come from but i wouldn't trade my journey for shit so it says, he reminds us that wisdom is not born to the rich and affluent, but learned through sacrifices and hardships thrown in life. No matter how many trials of pain you go through, you must open your heart up again and again. Never stop loving. Never stop loving. Never stop opening yourself up to love. Um, because there are gifts that come along with uh, enduring not being in a situation where you're being abused and enduring but doing what's best for you honoring yourself and if, the, if that means separating yourself from the situation doing that and then daring to love someone else or something else but never let the disappointments that you've experienced in the past prevent you from loving again moving forward in love and keeping your heart open because that is christ consciousness Consciously, Socrates reminds us of our origins and where we've come from. He sits the ego down and points out the importance of connecting with our neighbors, family, friends, and strangers along the journey. He comes through to tell you that a part of yourself has rested on the physical for far too long. If you owe an apology to another, now is the time to knock on their door and apologize. Let the weight of it all go. If there are ones of you who have allowed your ego to keep you from apologizing your pride to keep you from apologizing or standing in the truth of where you may have hurt harm or disregarded someone it is time for you to step forward and to issue that apology so that you can move forward just off 4242 and improve that relationship or those relationships what you've been experiencing is the dark night of the soul the dark night of the soul is also known as an ego death and you won't be able to receive all that god has in store for you until you put its ego in its proper place and become more vulnerable more authentic more honest more transparent 
um, not only as it relates to other people in your life, but about yourself. And so sometimes apologizing is um, acknowledging, you know, where you may have fallen short, but still loving yourself enough to forgive yourself and ask for forgiveness um, from those whom it may be beneficial for you to ask for forgiveness from or acknowledge that you have wronged them in some way so that you can continue to move forward with divine connections and not low vibrational connections that drain you um so yeah i think that's a good place to stop we've been at it for damn near an hour i hope the missus found you well if it did not find you well i hope that it leaves you well i don't know that i have time to do the feminine reading or even the possible karmic um energy reading that i was talking about doing but keep uh an eye out for them as i probably will record them over the next few days if not today and yeah if you're interested in a personal reading feel free to um reach out to me at turquoise majesty at gmail.com i offer readings um in a myriad of formats and also keep your eyes out for the myriad of events that i will be vendoring at um soon i have some things in the works to uh announce and yeah with that being said y'all congratulations peace